Hey friends out there, this is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, and it's just about, oh, about 5.46 in the morning here in Northern California, and as usual, I'll talk about a few things today, hope everybody's doing as well as they can in a crazy ass world run by uh, maniacal, money-loving madmen bent on misery for the masses. Yep. That's right, friends. All of our invented problems are very solvable, invented by evil men. Very important to understand that. And they're the st same typical problems that go back thousands of years. And it has everything to do with money being used as a tool or a weapon against the masses. It really affects our psyche. It really affects our sense of happiness because happiness is a term that's comprised of many different facets, components. And among those are some that are vitally important to our overall happiness as human beings. And at the top of that list would be things like freedom, security, prosperity, safety. These are the things that will bring us contentment, peace, and joy. And, you know, being human, we're all working behind the eight ball from the get-go. Okay, and this, this goes back to the original sin, the fall of man, this partaking of the fruit, the forbidden fruit of knowledge of good and evil. It really does. I mean, I have no other explanation for all the crap, the organic crap that we have to face as humans. So when I'm talking about the invented crap, it's artificial, it's manufactured, it's made up in order to take advantage of huge swaths of the population, you see. There's absolutely no rational, logical basis, reason, why all of humanity cannot be prosperous. And that's a fact, especially in this day and age, you see. When it's easier, so easy to produce, to manufacture, to supply all the things we want and need, even luxury items, friends. I mean, go look at your local yacht harbor, wherever you are. Okay, see all the vacant boats sitting there. Yachts, beautiful things, just sitting there. The same holds true for private jets, helicopters, you name it. Okay? There's all kinds of extra luxury stuff right now. There's a glut of housing. You wouldn't know it, but there's an absolute shortage of affordable housing, right? Investors buy up everything. You understand they manipulate things. You don't need a monopoly to really make life miserable for people. We've banned, out, monopolies have been outlawed for a long time, right? We want free fair market competition, right? Isn't that what capitalism is all about? I mean, that's one of the fundamental precepts of true capitalism is that it's got a competitive nature okay and there's risk involved and that's what makes the game fun you know i mean what's the the, <clears throat> the funnest games that you've ever watched have stayed close all through the game they were exciting till the very end because you didn't know who was going to win and we shouldn't care as a human race who wins this thing you see but we do. We're all been trained to believe that it's about winners and losers. And it just has to be that way in this game called capitalism. And But we all know it's an amalgamation of socialism, too. Oh, well, these are concessions we make to these lowlifes, right? These losers, these defective people, that the, the, the welfare sponges out there, right? sucking off the state i mean i listen i watch judge judy she's entertaining but i mean this is one of her pet peeves these people that are oh me and bert we're paying your we're paying your salary you know it's coming out of our pockets and all this crap and i think 
God Almighty, I mean, does the woman ever think about how things look through God's point of view? She's so bent on just seeing things through the law, the worldly, secular point of view. And there's no, there's no foundation there. That's, that's, it, it's built on sand. All those laws are in flux constantly. A lot of them are very arbitrary, very capricious. You understand? I mean, the way God sees it, it's God's planet. We're God's equally beloved children. It's just like any good parent would see it. That's what you want to see through God's eyes. It's simple as looking through a good parent's eyes and how they feel about their kids. They love them equally. They treat them equally. And if they didn't, the kids wouldn't respect it, even if it was the kid being favored. So we got to understand what I'm talking about is good for the evil people. It's good. I'm telling them, stop being evil. You know, it's like Christ when he lambasted the evil men of his day, when he, over 2,000 years ago now. I, I'm on their side. I want what's best for them. And if I don't speak out in their behalf, then I'm not doing what I'm here to do. Okay? Like the reason Christ was here to do something. He didn't come for the righteous, he came for the wicked. And these people are making our lives miserable, okay? You know, I get off on a tangent. When I start talking about how evil these people are, I mean, they are evil, and they that's an irrefutable fact. They cannot debate that, okay? They are evil, and all people on earth could be prosperous. But you look at how entrenched we are in this status quo, this have and have not scenario, this ever growing wealth imbalance. And it's on purpose, friends, and it's been going on for thousands of years, and it's got to come to an end. Previously in history, whenever oppression got too bad, there was always a bloody revolt, a, a civil war of some sort, a revolution, whereby there was relief for the masses. Okay? But this is a different era in history. We're down to the wire. I firmly believe that we are at the, the end of the age, is how it's written in Scripture. The end of an age. It's not the end of the world. Okay, It's not the end of time. It's just an end of an age. It's the age of the money lovers, these masters of misery, these madmen that don't know what's good for themselves. I mean, when you forsake your own conscience, when you put profits ahead of people, you're evil. That's just a fact, okay? And you are not right with God. You can't be. And that's, that's bad. In the long run, that's bad. Where you're going from here is what we should be concerned about. Not just how good we have it while we're here, I mean, how hard is it to have creature comforts? And beyond that, I mean, people are content with very little. People are satiable. Normal people in their right mind are satiable. But we do want a sense of security. Financial, yes, financial security. We don't want to have to worry about our, paying our bills, buying food. Paying your housing, all the essential human needs. You don't want it to be a, a more an ever increasing burden, where you you know your sense of insecurity, your sense of fear keeps growing. That's not progress, friends. That's regress. But that's exactly my grievance here, that I'm trying to convey to people so you understand clearly. That's what's what's happening socially, economically speaking, is on purpose. It's by the will of evil men. And like I said, it, previously in history, there was a bloody revolt. But this is a different era. So these people, now they there's nothing stopping them. They're like drunken children that hijacked, usurped the school bus, and they're just bent on, they don't know. They just, they're out of control. Obviously, that the masses are much smarter than the people that are in control. And that's frightening. That, that is scary. That's why we've got to turn to God. Only God can help us out of this 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 mess, this muck and mire, this nightmare that they've dragged humanity into. They really have dragged us down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell a long, long way. It's like we're all stuck on this ship physically. That's this ship of fools careening to destruction that they're in control of. They don't know what the hell they're doing. 
Okay. Oh, is the Fed gonna raise the interest rate? Oh, we got better not. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 what do you? It's it's. You see, they want to walk the tightrope. They want to keep on keeping the status quo, this trajectory, where the wealth imbalance keeps growing. Do you understand? Where they can just keep, well, we just keep enough people poor and make sure we got a healthy amount of people that are that are hard up and living in utter fear, uh, desperation, financial desperation. They they better they're living hand in mouth, paycheck to paycheck, and they know if they don't get their butt, this is the fire they need under their butt. You know, it's like the whip. A slaver used a whip on a slave, right, to get them to to move, to motivate them, right? Well, that's what they use. Financial fear, financial insecurity. It's a fear-driven society. All these people doing jobs that are imperative to society, nobody can argue that fact, that truth. And they're being cheated. They're being cheated. Am I saying, oh, just keep raising wages? Well, you're going to cause inflation. No, I'm not saying that at all. No, minimum wage could be 25 cents an hour today, but be worth more than that dollar in the early 60s. That dollar minimum wage that afforded you a middle-class lifestyle. Home ownership, yes. One person working in the family, yes, yes. With disposable income, yes, yes. That's the America I remember as a child, which wasn't that long ago. It goes fast, friends. <clears throat> Seems like yesterday I was a teenager. I still got that heart and spirit, that mindset. Yeah, life's fun, man. Life's good. I'm enjoying it. There's all there's so much interesting, cool stuff, man. I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. It's exciting to be alive, man. It's exhilarating. We might be dead today. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank God for every minute and say, God, I don't ever want to die. I want to live forever in paradise. He says, yes, I understand. I understand. And here there's a way out, you know, and it's, I mean, you know, if I kept that truth from evil men, I'd be evil. You see, we're all evil. We're all culpable to some degree. Because we're all money lovers, and money is the root of all evil. This is the ultimate sin. If the left hand causes the right hand to sin, cut it off. I mean, this is a, we're going to talk about sin, man. We've got to talk about our polluted hearts like it's written in Scripture. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all else. We're all screwed up. We're supposed to be like little children. It's what use do they have of money? What are they, we teach them everything they know about money. Crap, it's the driver of so much of the evil in our land. We can't handle it. If we were going to learn how to handle it, we would have done it by now. I'm denouncing it. Where are all the preachers, the TV preachers out there denouncing this crap? No, they're saying, oh, well, it's by your support. You know, they want your money. They want your tithe. Tithe is a chunk of change. You take it out of a predominantly Christian nation that believes in tithing, that's a chunk of change, friends. See, the beauty of what I do for people, it's free. I, I could I couldn't imagine it being any other way. I couldn't. The best things in life are free. And you notice I do every time I get out here and do this, which, you know, I might stop doing it tomorrow. I mean, I guess sometimes I don't want to do it, you know. The older I get, the lazier I feel sometimes, you know. But um, I do it. And people ought to be free to get to work when they feel like it, man. I mean, employers, employers, ask yourself. Masters, ask yourself. Bosses, ask yourself. And bosses, I figured it's originated somewhere in Europe, and it, come, it, it actually means master. So the next time you affectionately refer to your master as your boss, just remember where that term came from. It means master.